our lesson for today will be looking at chemistry 1501 assignment number two um 2021 question will be looking at question 23 and 24 that is based on limiting reagent excess reagent theoretical yield and percentage yield let us start this is the actual question where we have to choose it's a multiple choice question by the way so the question says, I mean the scenario says, consider the following reaction and answer questions 23, 24 that fall. You are provided with 1.00 mole of magnesium and 0.252 mole of iron 3 oxide. The balanced equation for the reaction is, we have this equation. Most of my students normally struggle when you are not given this balanced equation. But most of the time you'll be provided with this balanced equation if you're not provided with the balanced equation within the scenario you might be given the molecular formulas like this then if you just react the two and then also write down the product then it will be simple for you to simply balance the equation there is a lesson video actually lesson videos where we talk about how to write chemical reaction how to balance how to combine two elements or three to form the product so you don't have to be challenged by these concepts so in this case we're given this which makes everything simple now the past lesson series based on this chapter I always talked about steps in which you should take in order to calculate the desired answer based on the, the question that you're given so in this case we have to choose amongst these five options which one is the limiting reagent we are looking at the limiting reactant and then we have to calculate normally I say you have to tabulate to make things simple when you put a table everything will be simple and then remember that a limiting reactant simply a substance that is used up completely in a chemical reaction and it actually stops the reaction remember that this arrow simply means that we react this and this to form this and this so the formation of the products is fully dependable to the reactants so if one of the two is used up in a chemical reaction the chemical reaction will um, instantly stop meaning that the production of the two will actually stop so we have to determine which one will stop the reaction that is the limiting reagent so what we can do now is simply put we line up our reactants here and then let us include the more ratios the more ratios are those numbers that we have here then remember that if there's no number at all like this one simply know that we have one here so we are given that we have 1.00 mole of magnesium and 0.252 mole of ion 3 oxide so for the sake of notes the steps that we need to take when calculating the limiting, the limiting reactant the first step if you're given the mass of the reactants in grams you have to convert them to more by using this equation n is equals to m over m whereby this is the mass in grams that you are given in the scenario of that particular reactant this is the molar mass that you can find on the periodic table I always advise students to use UNISA periodic table in order to get correct answers because if you can check the rounding off of the molar masses from different periodic tables you'll see that they are not the same so make sure you use that periodic table then the second step you need to perform mole ratio and I normally say when you use this equation you are actually calculating the first number of mole you can say the first number of mole 
and then mole ratio when we use n over n it's equals to r1 let me say n1 and 2 over r1 it's equals to r1 over r2 this simply means the number of mole of the first um limiting not limiting reactant i mean reactant over the second number of mole of reactant it's equals to the ratio of the first reactant the ratio of the second reactant with this equation we calculate the second number of mole this was the first number of mole then to calculate the second number of mole we use this now let me apply the steps in order for you to understand so you can see that we are given the number of mole already so we cannot calculate them using this equation we are not given the mass in grams but we are given the moles so you can simply go straight to the second step by the way this is the first step we can say this is the first number of mole remember that i said the first number of mole you find it using that equation but since you're given we can go straight to the second step the second step we need to perform mole ratio now this is the column of magnesium what we do it's n instead of n1 let us say n of magnesium this this bracket simply shows that this is the number of mole of magnesium it's just an indication over the number of mole of ion 3 oxide so the one that you're looking for you put it on the numerator over the one that you have by the way now we are trying to calculate the second number of mole of magnesium so the mole ratio r1 look at this number here it's three so you put three over this number here it's one you put one then from here let us substitute okay here we substitute by the first number of mole that we are given or calculated in this case we are given so the number of mole of ion 3 oxide it's 0 0.25 2 equals 2 well 3 over 1 is the same as 3 then from here we just have to solve for this we multiply both sides by 0 0.252 we are going to get let me actually multiply so that you can see we multiply here by 0 0.252 also multiply this one by 0 0.252 this will get rid of this or they will result into one one multiplied by um, number of moles of magnesium will be number of moles of magnesium equals to 3 multiplied by 0 0.252 we get 0 0.756 more so this will be the second number of mole of magnesium that we have and then we can go ahead and verify or we can simply conclude from here which one is the limiting reactant limiting reactant but normally i advise my students to just verify so to verify we calculate the number of moles of ion 3 oxide since you're on the column of ion 3 oxide we put it on the numerator over the number of moles of magnesium and then the ratio r1 here will be 1 over 3 go ahead and substitute over the number of moles of magnesium we have 1.00 equals to 1 over 3 then we multiply both sides by 1.00 then this will result into 1 1 multiplied by ion 3 oxide we are going to get ion 3 oxide so this 1 over 3 multiplied by 1.00 we are going to get 1 over 3 and then when we round off to 3 decimal places we get 0 0.333 mole so 
let us go to our step we are done with step number two step number three you'll have to determine your limiting reagent and excess reagent how do we do that we check if the first number of mole is greater than the second number of mole you should know that this will be your excess reagent then if your first number of mole is less than the second number of mole just know that this will be the limiting reagent this is just another way to quickly find the limiting reagent so in this case let us apply step number three to check which one is the limiting reagent by the way this and this is the second number of mole so let us check we have 1.00 um versus 0 0.74756 i mean you can see that the first number of mole is greater than the second number of mole this number is bigger than this number and then let us check this one we have 0 0.252 which is the first number of mole you can see that this is less than 0. Point, actually the second number of mole 0. 0.333 is bigger than 0. 0.252 so with this you can safely conclude which one is the limiting reagent so our ion 3 oxide will be the limiting reagent and then this one will be the excess reagent but the question is asking about the limiting reagent so we are looking at this now looking at our options you can see option 2 is the correct answer and by the way this cannot be the limiting reagent because limiting reagent is between the two the reactants so this and this cannot and will not be the limiting reagents and also this one it's not and then this option is also out so it was between this one and this one but through calculations we have calculated the correct answer so the correct option here is option two our next question which is question 24 it says what is the theoretical yield of magnesium oxide that can be produced so the the theoretical yield can be calculated using this is the theoretical yield you'll have to take the desired product is the mole ratio between the desired product and the limiting reagent over r for product r for that limiting reagent so looking at the balanced equation we are looking for this we want the theoretical yield of this then we know that this is the limiting reagent so we can just perform more ratio between the two so we have n of ion 3 oxide over n of actually we put our desired product here it's mgo over n ion then we know the balanced equation you can see that the mole ratio of magnesium oxide it's three and then ion it's one so we have three over one then we go ahead we substitute the number the first number of mole you, should, you have to be careful, very careful here we don't substitute by this but we substitute by the first number of mole that we have calculated or given so we call we substitute this one which will be zero 
point two five two equals to three and then from here you can go ahead and multiply both sides we actually do this multiply by zero point two five two also this one is zero point um zero point two five two then this will get rid of this we get 0 0.756 more but you can see that the options are given in grams so we have to convert this into grams so we have number of moles of magnesium oxide is 0 0.756 more then let us use our equation n is equals to m over m so we are looking for this m we can just rearrange our equation multiply by m the capital letter m the molar mass both sides this will get rid of this and then m is equals to n multiplied by the molar mass Okay, looking at the predictable, we have MgO, so we want the molar mass of magnesium. We have one atom of magnesium, one atom of oxygen. So we can just say, or the number of moles first, which is this. So we have 0 0.756, and then the molar mass. The molar mass of magnesium, we have 24. 0.31 plus oxygen we have 16.00 then you can simply punch this on the calculator it will tell you we get that our answer is 30.47 grams so let us look at the option okay we can see that is this one um, 30.47 when you round off to one decimal place you're going to get 30.5 grams so the correct option is this one which is option number three the next lesson video will be looking at more questions based on assignment number two whereby student they request for those challenging questions to be explained through the lessons like this that's it for this lesson video this is wahula sj thank you very much